Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, my name is Neslihan Aydagül and I am the managing director for the business years operations here in the United Arab Emirates. I would like to welcome you all to this one-on-one -on -one live interview discussion with engineer Yasser Zaglul, Group Chief Executive Officer of National Marine Dredging Company. Welcome, sir. Hello, Neslihan. Welcome. With the UAE having orchestrated a world-beating vaccination campaign following their exceptional management of the pandemic, the focus now is on taking advantage of the new normal and very much so of business continuity. For the NMDC, this is especially and particularly a very exciting period. Having just completed a mega merger with the National Petroleum Construction Company, the group today has become a powerhouse in EPC arena. Together with new innovative technologies, driving operations to new heights, now is the time for expansion and growth into new markets. At this very important moment for NMDC and very much so for the sector, today with engineer Yasser, we will discuss the current outlook and the future plans for the company and very much so the sector. Hello, engineer Yasser, hope you're well today. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. We have audience joining us from all around the world. And I think everybody is very much excited to hear uh, the uh, NMDC uh, initiatives and uh, the projects going forward. But as we have discussed with you multiple times uh, in the past, uh, even in person, the name of the game last year has been uh, resilience. And I think we, as we have been saying it for a while as well, have redefined the meaning of resilience. In your opinion, as we look at the whole global uh, market and kind of focusing into the UAE and to Abu Dhabi, what have been your major takeaways and what is your overall perspective on how resilient we have been? Yeah, actually, um, uh, first of all, thank you so much, Nisan, for considering me talking about this important topic. Uh, at current difficulties actually for all of us. Uh, it's very obvious now that uh, a lot of change is happening and the challenges as well, disturbance during the current period and the uh, last period as well. So when we talk about resilience, I believe resilience during this tough period is a key success factor for, uh, for all businesses. So um, if we look around and we see difficulties around us everywhere, uh, these difficulties and the challenges and the changes could lead for uh, you know, degeneration of the system. And if we focus only, uh, you mentioned growth and expansion and diversification. If we focus now on only growth and expansion and diversification without looking to uh, resilience and be resilient, that could lead really for uh, fragile rigidities. And that could be very risky for, for, for the business. And we can see a lot of business shut down, a lot of business declined because of this. So when we talk about resilience now for the business, it's not only uh, ability to, to embrace the challenges and the changes and to cope against the changes, but to as well bounce back and grow. So um, to, to be able to uh, withstand adversity during this tough period. And this is the main success for, uh, for sustainability at the moment. So um, capacity of learning and adaptation is very important at the moment. And here it comes to, in my view as well, in relation to resilience, uh, it could be the experience. Once we say experience people and experience on our business, this is very positive, uh, of course, uh, note and word. However, during the current period, we have seen it. Experience could be certain dilemma for the resilience. Mm -hmm. And this comes to risk and big risk because when we have extensive experience in certain manner on our way forward, that means we used to do the things like somehow and we are very efficient. But once the circumstances comes different, then the experience, the true experience, 
should let us maneuver against the storm weather. So, uh, yeah, makes us to sail safely with the ship. This is very, very important. And ability as well to change and adopt for experienced people, it's not easy. It's not easy if you don't think different. And this is very, very important and crucial for our business to succeed. Of course, as NMDC and the NMDC group diversification, definitely we are lucky that we are working on a UAE atmosphere and our home market is UAE. As you can see around us, everywhere, the market is down and a lot of challenges outside the market. And if you look at the active market now global-wise, you will find, alhamdulillah, NMDC active on these active markets, UAE, Egypt, and GCC. These are, I believe, the main active market at the moment uh, worldwide. And that makes our life a li little bit easier than others, but in the same time as well, if we are not having the right resilience to these changes, we cannot cope. Even in an active market like UAE and Egypt, during this tough period and difficulties, all clients now, without any exception, they think different. They deal with the contractor in different manner. And they have the right to do so because they have difficult period. We have difficult period. And if we talk about partnership instead of contracting business, so when we go to, any, to the client and we do the job, we do it in partnership manner. And if we don't do it on the right way for the clients as well during the discount period, then we are not uh, true partners to the client. So we have to, we understand their position and they understand our position. And by partnership, I believe we can be uh, successful. So resilience for NMDC is, is very important to have it on the ground. Resilient is big word, but if we don't have resilient structure, if we don't have less burden, able to fly, if we don't have fast response to, to the changes, if we don't have realistic planning, then we are not resilient. This is on business-wide. But of course, the most important thing on and during this difficult period, I believe, is uh, we talk about NMDC group. That's mean we talk about uh, around 20,000 employees. 20,000 employees means 20,000 families. So if we don't have the right communication across the group, then we will be in trouble. The people on the ground who are working at site on this tough uh, weather, in this tough period. Uh, a lot of people, because of this pandemic and all of these things, they cannot travel easy. They are far from families. They need family support. So we have to get in our group as well, emotional regulations, family and people support. We have to, to make ourselves as, uh, as a family across the group. And these things, I believe, are very, very crucial for the success now during this tough period. We have to be together in, in, in right meaning of being together. We have to be one family on the right meaning of the, of the family. So for me, is uh, the ability to embrace all of this. And for the group, we have to have the right response for all of this challenge. If you look at NMDC, what we have done uh, since we, we felt the heat of the pandemic, uh, really the team of NMDC did that in great job. You can uh, find straight away the team came by realistic planning for different scenarios. What could happen? So if we were very proactive on that, we defined in certain scenarios, three, four scenarios, and alhamdulillah, whatever happened was not out from these scenarios. And each scenario, we have response team for this. We created mainly for that a crisis management team. And CMT were really able to communicate uh, with every person in the company to have the proper implementation for the planning, what we have done, to care about people, Emotional-wise, family-wise, support-wise, and Alhamdulillah, we 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 were successful last year. It was so difficult, and up till now, we are doing great, and we start to grow already 
with the merging as well, more growth to come and more success to come. Uh, so when we see NMC growth, a group growing and successful during this difficult time, I believe the main driver behind this and mere success factor behind that was to be resilient. Absolutely. Just to set a bit of the foundation, obviously we have a very uh, diverse uh, audience joining us from all different sectors. Uh, but uh, just to set the foundation a little bit, an MDC group at the moment is in hail and Gasha artificial island uh, construction projects, Khalifa port, South Quay uh, development, for sure works. Obviously you have quite a few uh, projects in Egypt uh, two of the um, main projects are Ras Gargoub and Manzala Lake. And obviously, just recently, the chairman of Suez Canal has uh, announced uh, your involvement in the further development of the canal itself. So when we look at the diversity of your projects, obviously from a transportation logistics to oil and gas and infrastructure development, um, and Obviously, you're in different geographies as well. And the main subject matter at the moment is resilience, right? So what are the uh, over, um, overarching uh, three factors, if you could say, that ensured uh, that NMDC have remained resilient uh, in this period? Actually, whatever we are doing now in diversification and expansion, it's main uh, as well part of the resilient. Uh, in short, if you look at uh, so many huge organizations 50 years ago, how many uh, of these organizations are still on the ground? Not much. Uh, the driver for success and to sustain on this is to be resilient, not only on how you work, but as well how you set up your business. So by diversification uh, during the tough period and markets, you can find um, a strong route to grow, and you depend on different routes on the organization. Organization is similar, like in my view, like a tree. As far as the tree comes bigger, you have more wind. But if you trim the, the tree on the side, in, in the nice shape and efficient shape, and you have a strong roots, so definitely the tree will stand against any strong storm. To have different sector and business unit, that's mean you are working and exposing the company to different uh, business and different sectors of income. So if one sector of the income comes down, you have another one coming up. And that was very clear during last uh, mm -hmm. period of the pandemic. You, will find, you, you found everybody found, for example, the oil and the gas market was going down but other markets going up and so on. Exactly. So you will find NMDC covering more than one or two or three sectors. So you come more resilient as well by somehow guarantee of continuous income from different business units. Absolutely. And this is actually a perfect bridge uh, to my uh, next question. Obviously, uh, originally an MDC being a uh, infrastructure uh, powerhouse, now the recent uh, merger with NPCC has ensured that you are an engineering procurement and construction powerhouse. Obviously, this is a, this is a major move. So just uh, obviously you have alluded to it a little bit already, but what does this merger to start with mean for both of the organization, for NMDC as well as NPCC? And more importantly, what does this merger mean to the country? In short, it means a stronger together. <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> if you look at uh, NMBCC, uh, I believe everybody knows how strong is MBCC. And uh, MBCC has a very strong history in oil and gas sector. NMDC has very strong history on dredging and marine. So if we, if we are together now to build the real infrastructure for the economy of the market we are working in, Abu Dhabi, Egypt, anywhere. So if you look at NMDC alone, we are working on, for example, infrastructure for ports, for oil and gas, for navigation, for real estate, for expansion, for all of these things. NBCC as well is working great on oil and gas. 
uh, and this is the main driver for the economy on so many countries. So together, we come by a complete comprehensive solution for the client. Mm -hmm. We come by source of development, very strong source of development for the economy to start with. So we are together building, in my view, the right infrastructure for the economy to grow. Absolutely. And again, talking about growth, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The figures I'm going to be are in um, at Dirhams. In 2019, the company has invested around 500 million dirhams in fixed assets. And in uh, 2020, it has invested around 300 million. So obviously, these have been in major fleets, uh, major um, uh, trading suction hooper dredgers and whatnot. I mean, in, in again, like uh, having the company prepare, you're obviously preparing the company for uh, immense expansion. Can you a little bit talk about the expansion and growth plans? And uh, what, can you give us a little peek into the horizon, talk, taking into consideration all these gigantic investments? Yeah, when we talk about horizon for the group, um, uh, yeah, we, we don't have ceiling for our goals, yeah. uh, that's for sure. And uh, once we consolidate together in MDC and the MDCC, and inshallah, very soon uh, more business units to come. So uh, this has to be driven very carefully, but uh, very confident as well of success. During the tough periods, if we talk about investment or consolidation, uh, we have to be very careful. We have to study it very well. We have to make sure that we are flying together, not pulling each other down. Because it's both sides. It's, uh, if you look at pro and con, yes, we together as a group, as more investment and more expansion, we can optimize a lot on the burden side. But as well, we are exposing more risk to the group. And that's why it has to be very well rationalized during this tough period. But the consideration and merging has been done after a, a very extensive study. And very, it was very carefully as well studied to make sure about the markets. Because by end of the day, we are walking into, into a certain market. Absolutely. So to stay, to stay here, uh, located in Abu Dhabi, as NMDC alone or MBCC alone, we have certain kind of limitation. Mm -hmm. But once we come together, first of all, we are optimizing the structure to be more resilient and less burden. So we are more stronger. That's mean with experience and the history of post organization, we have very strong roots. Then we need to grow. How we grow? NMDC has certain markets and certain activities. MBCC have their market as well as activity. Once we are together, automatically we are growing vertical-wise and horizontal-wise. Vertical-wise, that means the group has more activity. So we can go to the client, and inshallah, very, very soon in the future to talk to the client. And instead of having so many packages in your project and so many problems, we can come by one solution, technically mm -hmm. solution, we can come from A to Z, from package one to package five together or so forth. Other side as well, horizontal wise, horizontal wise, MBCC, they have their own market and we have their, our own market. So wherever we are, for example, very strong in Egypt, we can bring MBCC to Egypt. They are very strong in Saudi, they can bring an MBCC in, in Saudi. So exactly. we are horizontally expanding as well by sharing our market as well as by getting strong to penetrate new market for both of us. Absolutely. And again, on the subject of, of um, uh, strength and uh, creating a local powerhouse, over the past uh, couple of years, and uh, you just walk uh, through Adipek and uh, in, the, uh, in the exhibition and the conference itself, you have all these numbers on each exhibitor's wall, they're grading. And for those who don't know, that is the organization's in-country value rating. Uh, 
So obviously, yeah. this is this is this is a very interesting number. If you are planning on betting on uh, any project uh, in the in the in the Emirate, so obviously the in-country value program uh, is extremely important uh, indicator uh, for uh, getting a stake in any any uh, project. So. To kind of as a, as a as a local organization who obviously has uh, this capacity, and when you look at the uh, the merger, obviously with MPCC and NMDC, what does IC mean for the organization now overall? And when we look at uh, the possible expansion or entrance of any international organizations coming here, how can this program succeed? whilst creating an even playing field for international and local players. I know it's a heavy question and it's not one that is so easy to uh, answer, but I really would love to hear your opinion. Yeah, uh, actually ICD program, um, it's very valuable from uh, different kind of meanings. Uh, not um, only about uh, money, or about investment or added value. It is adding value or definitely to the community. But ICB, I see it by quite different way, which is very valuable meaning for ourselves. ICB means I'm going to care about the community. ICB means that I'm going not only just to do project and get some profit and run away, but no, I'm going to really to develop something around us. So when I sign contract now with the client, uh, having the criteria of ICV, it means I'm not signing only the construction uh, contract of the project, but I am committed as well to develop the community around us. And in my view, this is the real value for it. So we, we do projects in certain area, and the community of that area where we do project, they have the right to have value from this project. And that's exactly for me, the meaning of ICD. We develop certain area, that means people around this area, they should be as well having some benefit from this development, not only from uh, the outcome from the project, but as well as from the working process. And that in my view should not cost additional cost to the contractor at all. If we consider the local market for the available uh, items and material and development inside the, the, the local area of the project, that will help and support, not hinder the project efficiency. And I wish really to have this ICD not only in Emirates, I wish to have it in each area we are working in. And mm -hmm. actually in other areas as well, we are discussing with the, with the client uh, this kind of ICV, because definitely the perception from different clients in other areas, as well as uh, from the community around the project, will be very, very positive about the project. Absolutely. Um, Engineer Yasser, uh, obviously ICV is uh, extremely important and having the right um, uh, commitment and investment into the country that we are living and working in. Uh, but as, as you all know, uh, the businesses have been transforming uh, in uh, unprecedented uh, speeds over the last one year. And one of the most important uh, subject matters have been uh, digital transformation and uh, Industry 4.0. I mean, if we just look at Adnok itself with the command center and the use of artificial intelligence and whatnot. So it's not only about the, the, the human capital, but also about the use of technology and um, Internet of Things and kind of combining this uh, two uh, important aspects in creating a full-fledged uh, performing company. So it's, I guess it's fair to say that one of the silver linings of the pandemic was the acceleration and digitalization, obviously. So can we talk a little bit about how um, important is digitalization for NMDC and what advances in uh, digital technologies are changing your uh, the EPC industry overall? Yeah. Uh, 
digital um, and innovation on on an IT for NMC group is is crucial on so many things. Uh, first of all, efficiency report that's very important. Uh, communication between uh, the, across the group is very important. There is another thing for NMDC as public listed company as well is very important, which is internal control, business process. We are working now, we're starting to work as well, inshallah, and, and very soon we will uh, have robotic system and our system to optimize all kinds of uh, business process. So yes, innovation and digital, we can talk about ERP and we can talk about communication, we can talk about uh, working from home, and now working from home, it came to be normal culture now for a lot of things, uh, virtual meeting, instead of having the people from all sides to have one meeting, now uh, we, we, we easily can have virtual meeting for uh, people working on different sites, global wise, in same room. This is, this is added value for everybody, but for our side, if you look from other side about internal control, about automation, about as well, uh, to make sure that uh, public listed company regulation has been implemented everywhere across the group overall. So without, without IT system, without robust IT system, we cannot do that. So this, this is very important for us. Of course, efficiency wise for job as a physical work is very important. If you look at now um, all kinds of uh, our dredgers now, we, uh, when we have automation on the dredgers itself, that helps a lot on efficiency. Uh, we used to train the people, for example, on board. And training the people on board, that costs us a lot of money, especially for, for the new people. But now by uh, new innovation and digital wise, we have our simulation on, on the company, on the yard. So we can get the fresh graduated, especially the local people and others to train them uh, on the yard, on the simulator. So we, we don't lose money. We don't lose working hours on board. So definitely it's very clear that uh, without a robust IT system and the new digital uh, system, uh, we cannot sustain and we cannot be efficient. Internal control wise is very important for us as well as efficiency wise. Absolutely. So um, you did mention uh, a bit uh, on obviously having uh, been a, a public listed company. One of the most important indicators uh, when you talk about investor relations is now has become sustainability. So you see even major rating uh, companies globally are rating organizations uh, in their sustainability. So, uh, and I will uh, make a reference to one of the most interesting interviews uh, as the business year had to conduct last year was with engineer Aweda Almarar, uh, the chairman of uh, Department of Energy. And in this conversation, uh, the most important subject matter was uh, the trilemma, which is energy, economy, and environment. How to make uh, our Emirate and our country the most livable place and the most sustainable place and having the right uh, capacity, uh, a balance of environment, sustainability and economy. So when we look at uh, NMDC and when we look at uh, the environmentally safe and sustainable ways of dredging, what actions does NMDC take to ensure the marine biodiversity of the Gulf remains intact? That's a tough question, Ms. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they always consider us as dredging people an uh, enemy of the environment. But in my- This view, is where we clear the, this is where yeah. we clear the- <laughs> but, but In my view, it's not true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We, yeah, we understand very well that we are existing for developments. Uh, so we cannot be uh, working for developments while we are damaging others, especially the environment. So we cannot develop while we are damaging the environment because that, in short, will not be sustained. We develop the things, so one of the, our uh, key factors in our um, uh, journey to succeed is to care about the environment. If you look at our projects, for example, 
we are taking all measures required by regulation. Before even we start the project, we have our CMP has to be approved by EAD, Environmental um, Department of Abu Dhabi. And EID is really a main stakeholder for our business. Okay. We make sure jointly that we are taking all measures and we are uh, providing the right solution and methodology has been approved. Not only that, we started jointly to have initiative for to improve as well uh, the, the marine uh, life and uh, the marine environment. We have done a couple of projects together like, for example, uh, plantation of mangroves. We, uh, we did uh, a lot of projects to improve the water circulation for the life of the trees and mangroves. More even than this, it was certain projects for Abu Dhabi for, to develop as well economy. And this project uh, had some impact on environment, which has been showing on the study of the clients, not because of the construction, but because of the project itself. We have done initiative together with the client and AD. We did Habitat Island to increase mm -hmm. the marine life on it and to improve and to compensate much more than the, the, the harm happening on, on the environment. So without CMB, we cannot work. Without the approved measure and monitoring plan clearly defined by, by EAD and as well monitored during the project, we cannot work. And this very clear in our major project, like uh, in uh, what we are doing in Hinad uh, Gasha, Adna project, Abu Dhabi port, Khalifa port, all of it, you will find all projects following ROPIS uh, program uh, for, for environment. As well as you can uh, see in NMDC now HSE system, very robust system. And HSE now system is not just only to be regulation, but it's embedded culture into MBCC. In the MDC uh, group now, the people they know that it's mainly for them, not as a regulation to follow. No, it's protecting mainly them and the others. So it's embedded culture. So we, we are doing, of course, continuous improvement on this area to make sure that, yes, we are dredging contractor, marine, oil and gas contractor, but we care about the environment. Absolutely. And uh, just to make a little note, the, the projects that you're working on, uh, like uh, Gasha, uh, are particularly for gas. And gas, by default, is uh, a cleaner energy. So you're with your projects, you're uh, directly contributing into a more sustainable and less uh, carbon uh, expensive uh, project. So... Um, um, Engineer Yasser, obviously, uh, I mean, we're, this conversation uh, has been extremely enlightening to me. And uh, in the past, we've had multiples and multiples of conversations uh, for our uh, publications. And uh, obviously, you have been the CEO of NMDC since 2009. That's uh, 12 years. So, uh, and in this period, the uh, country's global economy, uh, the sectors that you're operating in have... Uh, overcome major challenges and with your team you have been leading this uh, these challenges when we talk about uh, today your position obviously after this uh, mega merger as well what excites you the most when you think about your uh, role as the group CEO of uh, NMDC group and uh, when you think about this uh, journey, uh, new exciting journey, what are the major milestones uh, you're looking forward to uh, accomplish? Um, the major milestone, actually, um, I cannot say major milestones because we have many milestones on our way forward and we don't have a ceiling for our goals. So I cannot really define as a mayor, because if I, if I hear major milestone, that means if we reach there, we somehow will be relaxed and st stop yeah. somehow, or relax somehow. But, but actually we have so many major uh, milestones. Uh, we have, as I said, no ceiling for our goals. And what makes me excited really is the growth and success. Every time, as you see during last period, every time we achieve something and we reach 
a certain milestone, milestone we fly straight away to, to the next uh, milestone. And we discuss all the team and I believe uh, this uh, culture embedded into the whole group now. Once we, try, we feel that we are landing on certain milestone or success, straight away we fly to the next one. And this is the main uh, things makes us excited here in MDC. Growth and no ceiling for uh, our goals. No, thank you so much. And I really would like to uh, close this conversation because uh, even before our interview and at the beginning of uh, our interview, uh, we really uh, kind of put a lot of emphasis on resilience. And we talked about being a resilient organization, having resilient strategies and whatnot. And I think one of the most important elements here is being a resilient leader. So in your opinion, what makes a leader resilient and um, what would be your uh, sharing points uh, with our audience? A resilient leader for, for, for me is, um, is so many things to be resilient, but the main thing for it, I believe, to be able to cope for a change. And while we are coping for a change and we are driving and maneuvering uh, very uh, strong against very heavy waves, we never forget about the people and our team. I believe this is the main thing, because this is a big dilemma to, to cope against the, the, the changes and maneuver with the group against the changes, which by end of the day, it's revenue and profits. So most of the uh, organizations where they're doing that, definitely you will have impact on people. So the resilient leader should not forget about that. And this is what we are doing in our level. Absolutely. And I can tell you uh, that the last year throughout um, tens of interviews we have conducted, uh, the most important aspect is taking care of your people. I think the last one year have proven to employees which organizations actually take care of their people. So, and I think uh, organizations that took care of their people in this period have earned a different level of loyalty from their uh, employees. So Engineer Yasser, thank you so very much for this very interesting conversation. As we're heading towards closing the, uh, the interview, is there anything else that you believe that we may have uh, missed out any important note that you have for our audience joining us from all around the world? Thank you, Ms. Lan. It was really a pleasure having you, uh, having me on, on in your dialogue. Thank you. Pleasure and honor. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Engineer Yasser. You have always been a, a very uh, kind person, always welcoming us in your offices. So we look forward to our continued collaboration. And I would like to thank our uh, beloved audience joining us from all around the world and listening to this very interesting conversation with uh, Engineer uh, Yasser, Group CEO of NMDC. And I would like to thank, uh, uh, of course, your team in NMDC who have helped us a lot in arranging in this interview. And um, as the business here, we will continue bringing uh, cutting edge uh, interviews in front of you of uh, sectors that are up and coming and important. So uh, keep in touch. And until uh, we meet again, Masalama. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.